speaking with the divine, with your higher self, with your guides and angels is a lot easier than you probably think. And in this video, I'm going to tell you how that's done. So stay tuned. Guiding Echoes and today is Thursday which means it is time for another Q&A session. So today's question comes from Latissa and she asks, how can we get to a level of perception where we can divine to a place or realm where we can have one-on-one -on -one conversations with our spiritual parents, guides, or guardian angels? Latisa, that is a wonderful question and it's one that I get asked a lot. So in this video, we're of course going to talk about how you can get to that level and here's something that is going to floor you. There is no level for you to get to for this to happen. <laughs> I know, shocking, right? All right, so let's go ahead and talk about a very common misconception that we hear about when it comes to communicating with guides, angels, and God and goddesses. So there is a very prevalent belief in the spiritual community that says in order for us to be able to speak to the divine, to have a relationship with these divine entities, we need to raise our vibration, right? We need to raise to a certain level in order for us to be able to communicate with our spiritual family. Well, I'm here to tell you that ain't true. Here's, here's why. Here's how I know that's not true. <laughs> Have you ever been in a position where you felt really down? I mean really down. You were sad, you were angry, you were depressed, you were in deep grief, all right? In the spiritual community, people, in the spiritual community, it's believed that feelings such as anger and sadness are not only negative emotions, but that they bring your energy down. They bring your vibration down. So it is believed that when your vibration is down at this level, communication between you and the divine is nearly impossible. It just doesn't happen. Well, I think we all know intuitively that that's not true. So to gain an example for this, let's look at the word angel. An angel is a messenger. That's what the word means. The word angel means messenger. And so a messenger is someone who gives and relays messages, right? He receives messages. He gives out messages. He is a messenger. And so in order for someone to be worthy of the name messenger, I would have to think that they'd have to be good at, you know, giving out messages. That's just me. <laughs> and so I don't know about you, but for me, there have been times when I've been really sad and really depressed and out of nowhere, I receive this intuitive guidance, intuitive information, and this amazing, overwhelming feeling of compassion, that things are going to be okay. And in that, I know that this information, that this comfort didn't come from myself, didn't come from my mind. I don't think it came from my spirit. You know, the only explanation I have is that my spiritual family came to my rescue. They felt that I was worthy enough to be loved and to be consoled and to be comforted. So there is no plane that you need to get to. You're already on it. <laughs> you know, we forget that we are in fact spiritual beings having a physical experience. You are already spirit. You are already connected with guides and angels and other spiritual beings that we're not even aware of. We're all connected. And so in order for you to be receptive of the messages that your angels and guides and spiritual parents may be sending to you, all you need to do is make it your intention to be aware of those messages. And a really good way for you to do that is to meditate, right? Um, it seems like whenever 
a spiritual question that comes up about balancing chakras or meeting guides and angels, the answer is almost always meditate and for a good reason. Meditation allows us to quiet our thoughts. Meditation allows us to bring down the anxiety, the worries, and the stress that our mind keeps reminding us about so that we can get into an energy that is calm and focused. So in meditation, we tune out the noise of the world and we go inside. And by going inside, we're really able to reach outside of ourselves into that oneness, into that field of consciousness where all information lies. And so this is when we are able to better hear the messages from our guides and angels and spiritual family. It's also when we are more receptive to that message. So if you want to be able to hear your spiritual family better, then meditation is a great way to start. Of course, you can also put into practice a prayer life. You can pray to your guides and angels through, of course, just speaking to them out loud the way that I'm talking to you right now. You can talk to them in your mind because they're telepathic. You might even want to start a prayer journal. That was a practice that was very powerful for me a few years ago. And oh my gosh, prayer journals are amazing because as you start writing in your prayer journal, you will find that a lot of times as you're writing, the answer to the questions that you're asking about come out as if from nowhere. And so I fully believe that a lot of us have this ability to communicate with the divine through writing. And if we are open-minded, if we are sincere in our request for information, that information will find its way to us. And for me, a lot of times it happens in the form of writing, or at least it used to. I don't really do the prayer journal thing so much anymore. But for you, if you're wanting to build a relationship with your guides and with the divine, that's a great way to start. So get a prayer journal, just write out whatever is on your heart, whatever is on your mind, and be opened to receiving information back. Be completely open in how you are feeling. And when you're chakras open, when your heart opens, when your mind opens, they will begin to funnel energy into you. And as you're writing, again, you may find that you write the answer to your problems out right then and there. <laughs> Another thing that's great about keeping a prayer journal is it's fun to look back on. You will find times when you were so broken, you felt so shattered, and you had the strength and the courage to write about these things and to ask for guidance. And maybe a few weeks later, a few months later, you go back to your prayer journal, you start reading through what's going on and you're like, oh, God totally answered that. Like I forgot, I had forgot I asked about this or I was so busy with life that I didn't take the time to thank him. Thank you, God, thank you, goddess, you know? So prayer journals can be an amazing way to connect with your spiritual family. And of course, going back to meditation, and meditation is wonderful because it starts as this practice with a very specific intention, right? And in the beginning, if you're new to communicating with your angels and with your spirit guides, and your spiritual parents, and even your loved ones who've crossed over to the other side, if you're having issues with getting those messages, Meditation tunes your mind in so that you can start hearing them during your waking moments. This is the level that I'm at. This is where a lot of people who practice meditation for quite some time eventually get to. So in order for me to talk to my guides and hear them, I don't have to go into that meditative state anymore. I'm kind of there all the time. And whether I'm happy or sad or angry or confused or seeking some type of insight, they always come to me. <laughs> you know, all I have to do is ask and they're right there. All I have to do is 
um, focus on them and I can pick up on their energy. I can find out where they're standing in the room and then I can have a telepathic um, conversation with them, which can be pretty cool. But you know what, I've got to tell you, the times when they are most prevalent in my life, the times when I am most aware of them, is during the times when, according to this spiritual movement or New Age movement, are the times that I shouldn't be able to hear them at all. They come to me in my darkest moments, and I hear them perfectly. I would even say I hear them with crystal clarity in the times when I'm most sad. And I think it's because they know that that's the moment when I need them the most. And so I want you to put aside this belief that you cannot communicate with your angels and your guides if you're sad, if you're in a place of pain. Put that belief to the side because that belief is blocking your communication. The new belief is that your angels absolutely can and do speak to you during the most challenging times of your life. You do not have to be in a place of peace, love, and happiness in order to hear them, in order for them to talk to you. You may have problems, you may have issues hearing them and receiving the message, not because your energy is low, not because your vibration is low, that's ridiculous. You may have problems hearing them because you are so focused on your problems. You are so focused on the environment around you. And for good reason. You know, when things come into our life, when challenges demand our attention, it's hard to put our focus anywhere else. And putting your focus on the things that demand your attention also do not lower your vibration. <laughs> Putting your attention on the challenges that have you worried or fearful does not affect your spiritual life to the point where you can no longer reach out to God and not get a response. You can always reach out to God and you can always get a response. The times when you don't get responses and this, and you know it, hand to God, like this happens to all of us. This has happened to me. Um, you may be saying to yourself, but you know what, Nicole, I hear what you're saying. I agree with you for the most part. I feel that this is intuitively true. However, I am in a place right now where I don't feel like I'm getting guidance. I don't hear anything. You know, I've asked God to talk to me. Nothing's happening. I've asked for signs. Nothing's happening. There's two things going on, okay, or two things that are possibly going on. The first is that we can sometimes be really disrespectful to our spiritual family in that we ignore them. There may have been a time in our past where our angels were giving us so much guidance, our guides were giving us so much guidance, and we ignored it. We acknowledged that we heard it. We may have even said, oh, okay, great, thanks for that, you know. We acknowledged it. But then we didn't do anything with the information. And so, after we've done that a period of times, after we've done that a few times, what will happen is our guides and angels are still around us. They don't leave. They don't leave. They're still around us. But they'll back off. Okay, they'll back off. And they do this so that we can experience what life is like without their guidance and input. They do this because we're not listening to them in the first place and they know that if they speak up, we're not gonna listen because that's been our pattern. So they very lovingly and very wisely back off. They will not speak to us directly because we have already asked for their information. We've already asked for their input in the past and we have ignored them, which is kind of a slap in the face. It's like saying, oh, thanks for your time, but I'm gonna do my own thing anyway. So angels and guys are like, hey, if you're gonna do your own thing anyway, that's fine. 
You have free will. That's fine. Do your own thing. We're going to be over here when you're really ready to listen. So what they do is they will allow us to kind of feel our way in the dark and make our mistakes. And then when we get to a point, you know, it's really kind of that breaking point where like, I can't do this anymore. I don't know what I'm doing. Like I've made all these mistakes. Like God help me. When we're really ready to listen, that's when they come. That's when they'll come back. And usually it, I don't know for you guys, but for me, like I'll feel it instantly. It's almost like, like there's a lot of people in the room all of a sudden. Where did you guys come from? <laughs> you know? And so they will, they know when to step back in. You know, they, I mean, they never left, but they know when to make themselves heard. And so if you're not hearing your angels, um, if you're not hearing your guides, it's because you're either very focused on the problems around you, so focused that you can't hear them, or it's because you've gone through this period of ignoring them, and so they've decided to, to back off a little bit. They're allowing you to grow. Believe it or not, this is so that you can grow. This is for your own emotional and spiritual growth. You know, it, it's kind of like if you keep going to a counselor or a therapist, and they keep giving you the same information and the same guidance and the same advice over and over again and you just don't listen. Do you know what a lot of therapists will do at that point? They'll drop you as a client. They'll say, you know what, I'm really sorry that you're going through this, but I can't help you unless you're willing to help yourself. And to help yourself, I really need you to listen to what I'm saying and to put it into practice. And if you're not willing to take that first step, I can't help you. You're wasting my time. You're really wasting your time. So it's best if we go our separate ways, at least for now. If you get to a point where you're ready to listen again, call me up, we'll schedule a session, and when you're ready to move forward, we'll move forward. Angels and guides have that same discernment. <laughs> so I want you to know that your guides and angels are always around you even if you don't hear them. They're always around you even if you don't feel them. And I feel that for a lot of you watching this, there's already been a huge shift taking place. I feel like for a lot of you, you're already feeling your guides and angels step forward because you, while watching this, have made it your intention that you're going to listen better. And you've already, congratulations, you've already started changing that belief that you can't hear them when you're sad. So now that you're already changing that belief and you're open to this idea that you can hear them and communicate with them regardless of where you are in your life, whether you're happy or you're sad or you're fearful or you're confident, wherever you are, you can hear them. You can hear them. If you're, if you're tuned into them and if they're talking, you can hear them. So for a lot of you, you're already starting to get a sense that they're there. Even though you're in a position of sadness and low vibration, you can hear them, right? So there's already this change coming. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I, can, I can actually feel it. I can feel this for you guys, and it's amazing. I'm really happy for you. So, you know, <laughs> when it comes to the different messages that are out there, take it with a grain of salt. You know, even the things that you hear from me, take it from a grain of salt. No one teacher has all the answers. We all have a little bit of the puzzle. You know, we all have a little piece of it. We all have some of the light, but not all of it. And some of us get it wrong. Some of us get it very wrong. So keep an open mind. Explore this stuff for yourself. Try your best not to blindly believe the information that is put out there. Test it, you know, test it on your own. Ask yourself, is this a fact or is this a belief that I've adopted because it's mainstream, because it's popular in this religion or it's popular in this culture? <laughs> like, why do I believe this? Is this fact? And once you start really investigating what you believe and why you believe it, I think you're going to be surprised at how things turn for you. Okay, so I do hope that this answered your question. Um, you know, again, the, the best advice I can give you is meditations, you know, tune yourself into that energy of your angels and everything just so you can get a feel for them. 
Um, cause when you know what they feel like, when you know what they sound like, you'll be able to hear them easier. Like they sound a lot lighter in your waking moments. You're not going to have to rely on meditation to communicate with them forever. In fact, that's, you know, think of that as, as kindergarten through, you know, third grade. That's, <laughs> you know, it's just going to take a few months, maybe even a couple years um, of that meditation practice to be set. And then you're going to hear them just fine, just fine. You've got nothing to worry about. And then also prayer. Keep a prayer journal. That's a great, great, great exercise for you, okay? So if you have any questions or comments or any information you'd like to share about the information provided in this video, or if you have a way that you like to connect with your spirit guides, if you have any additional information you'd like to add here, please, by all means, put it in the comment section down below. We would love to hear from you. And if you have any questions that you would like addressed on a Guiding Echoes video, you can put those in the comment section down below, or you can email me at info at guidingechoes.com. So if this is your first time watching one of my videos, I would like to welcome you to the Guiding Echoes community. And I would also like to invite you to subscribe to this channel. I offer weekly readings, Q and A sessions, just like this, because I believe that your spiritual and personal growth are very important, worthwhile goals. And so it is my desire to help you through those growth spurts, through those growth sessions. And, you know, over here we believe in spiritual practicality, practicality, and I also want to help you discover the wisdom of your soul. And so every week I do my best to provide you with insight, guidance, and tools that will help you to do those very things. So if you would like a one-on-one -on -one session with me or you'd like to learn more about what it is that I do, please visit my website at Guiding Echoes. Dot com. Thank you so much for spending your time with me and for watching this video, and I will see you next time. Namaste.